right, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending on where you are sitting right now. Uh, my name is Kim Folt. I am the research manager for the REACH project from URC. I welcome you all to everything you ever wanted to know about book production with Christian Yurt. This is uh, Christian's third webinar uh, detailing the process of book production, and today he is going to walk us through um, some issues related to pre-press. Christian, just to give a little background on him, he is a senior business developer for Bird International, um, education market focused on printing. He has 15 years of experience in printing, 11 years in pre-press, four years in business development. Um, and to even put it in, in greater context, Bird Drug has printed over 100 million textbooks. So we are, we are in the right place in order to learn more about the process of textbook production. Um, just a little, um, if you'd like to chat while uh, Christian is sharing his slide deck, there you have a few options. On the right side of your screen, you'll have um, uh, the chat window, and you can send a chat to the panelist, you can send a chat to an individual uh, participant, or you can send a chat to all members attending the webinar. Uh, additionally, below that, you'll have the Q&A where you can share your questions, um, so we can keep the dialogue going while Christian is presenting. Once he has completed his presentation, we'll open it up to, uh, to him so that he can sh uh, answer some of your questions. So with that, I will um, give it over to Christian. Hi, thanks a lot, Kim. Thanks a lot for this nice introduction. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all our listeners around the world from the heart of the Black Forest in Germany today. I'm just, I'm located in Offenburg, which is just a stone's throw away from Strasbourg, where Gutenberg has invented uh, the letter birth, the basics for the letter birth uh, decades back. My name is Christian, and I'm working for the international printing and media company, Burda International. As Kim has already explained, my role involves business development in the field of educational materials focused on book production, or in other words, the whole book chain from pre-press, printing, until distribution, and more, all over the world. With the great support of URC, it is my pleasure to present in the next around 40 minutes important basics for print ready files. The idea is to explain the most important specifications, or in other words, most typical mistakes which we see daily by printing educational materials. I won't be able to discuss all specs for printing files today because this will take much more time, as everybody knows, I guess. Coming to our agenda, to our roadmap for, for today, I have worked out four major topics, including key specifications for printing files. The first one, document and layout. The second one, pictures and graphics. The third one, color management. And the last one, some small words about files. Good, let's start right at the beginning. A very important topic, the number of inner pages of a book. It's absolutely not possible to print any number of inner pages. Every printing machine follows internationally standardized printing schemes or input systems. The most layout or graphic designers normally know this already, but still we see almost always paginations which are not suitable for printing right away. By overhanding printing files with such not quite correct number of pages, the printer has to add or delete normally two or three pages. This will look, if you look on my small video on the small screen, this will look like this at the end you will receive at the end two more pages as every printer has to use a logical print number for inner pages. Of course, most of the time, procurement teams agree to delete or to add uh, delete blank pages or adding blank, blank pages at the end of the book. But the issue is it takes time. It, it takes time to discuss and solve this issue. By starting to talk about printing specifications like the number of inner pages after a contract was awarded, we are losing a lot of time which we normally should use to print, finish and deliver the books 
right in time to have the books before school start in the classrooms available. Based on this, it is essential to provide printing files including the correct number of inner pages, or let's say a correct number of printable number of inner pages to avoid any to avoid losing time. How can you do this? Just lose uh, use the four split rule. I'm not sure whether this is the correct name for the, for this rule. Um, it's based on the signatures or impositioning schemes of a printing machine. Uh, by dividing your number of inner pages by four and the result is an even number, you, are, you will be always safe. Looking on the signatures, looking on the printing signatures or impositioning schemes of a printing machine to understand why we, why you, you, you should use the FOSTED tool. Um, on this slide, we'll see different page impositioning schemes. For example, one of the smallest four pages up to 32 pages. And please note, this is not the end. It's depending on the printing machine and the format, the size of your book, some printers can print up to 96 pages or even more 144 pages or even more pages in one shot. By dividing all these numbers by four, the result will be an even number. Of course, uh, expect the first impositioning of four pages. It will be a result of one. And last but not least, Please keep in mind, by talking about book printing, the paper will be printed on both sides. As a result of this, it is basically not possible to print an uneven number of pages. Coming to our next slide, still in the field of document and layout, bleeding. Bleeding and margin area. I will focus on bleeding. Bleeding is printing that, give, that goes beyond the edge of the sheet before trimming. In other words, the bleed is the area to be trimmed off. The bleed is the part on the side of a document that gives the printer a small amount of space to account for a movement of the paper and design in consistencies. Artwork and background colors can extend into the bleed area. After the trimming, the bleed ensures that no unprinted edges occur in the final trim document. It is very difficult for a printer to print exactly to the, until the, to the edge of a sheet of a paper. So to achieve this, it is necessary to print a slightly larger area than is needed and then, trim the, and then trim the paper down to the right finished size. Images, background images and fills which are intent to extend to the edge of the page must be extended beyond the trim line to give a bleed. This is really important. Again, sometimes layout and graphic designers like or tend to forget this. They just send us the PDF document uh, with the net or with the final size of the of the book. No printer, of course, the printer can use these files, but um, most of the time, because of the movement of the printing machine, your quality, the printing results will not be really good. Please keep in mind to use bleeding area. Please brief your design and layout test to use the bleed area. I would recommend to use three millimeter at this stage for the bleed area. You can also use more, it doesn't matter, but at least please use three mm. On the next side, impact of binding type on cover format. Using these types of binding will cause a book spine or back of the book where normally information about the book are written to find it easier, for example, in a bookshelf. The spine refers to the outside edge of the book or back of the book where the pages are gathered together by using perfect binding or thread sewn. Or, of course, thread sewn and perfect binding together. Sometimes prepared guides tend to forget considering the back of the book during the layout process. It's not a big deal to adjust or implement the spine into the layout afterwards. Even the printer will, I guess, support you and help you to implement the spine after he has received your printing files, your cover files. But again, and which is, as, which is the main topic for today, we are losing time if we adjust our implementer spine afterwards. Uh, some of our listeners will ask now, which is the size for the back of the book, or 
what which size which height should we consider during the layout process uh, for the book for the cover it's very easy to answer this question because there's an easy formula available which we which we have here on the next slide the first picture shows the formula the requirements are paper weight paper bulk number of inner pages all together multiplied divided by 2000 and your result will be your spine your spine height in millimeter for example using an 80 gsm paper 80 gsm paper weight multiplied by 1.2 for paper bulk which is let's say a standard bulk or volume um, multiplied by number of inner pages up to your book here for 144 inner pages divided by 2000 your result will be 6.9 millimeter just round it up and you will receive seven millimeters this layout should consider or this for this book the layout designer should consider seven millimeters for the spine and the cover format again maybe some of our listeners will ask now how can we calculate this beforehand um, as maybe the paper bulk volume is not available during the layout process this situation can be improved by requesting detailed paper specs during the tender process just ask for the detailed specs ask for the paper bulk for example not only for 80 gsm specify your paper in detail and you will be able to implement your spine or calculate your spine in advance or even uh, just ask your printer after the tender was awarded or the job was awarded to him and ask him which kind of paper specs he has to fix or to implement it as soon as possible. Leaving the field of document and layout, coming to pictures and graphics. And we are coming to resolution. Resolution, I think, is content, constantly a topic. Just some short questions, sentences about it. Again, I guess the most layout and design designers know already please use only or please use at least 300 dpi high, high resolution for your pictures please brief your designers using only 300 dpi not lesser of course it's also possible sometimes to use lesser dpi for example if you have a small picture but um, forget it i'm a friend of easy uh, reglements easy rules just keep in mind uh, just tell to your designers use only 300 dpi for pictures and you will be safe in every situation using another dpi using lower resolution for example 72 dpi which is a screen resolution will end in uh, in the mess your printing quality will be very poor and there is no chance to fix this or to, to fix this afterwards uh, during the printing process for example second topic in the field of pictures and graphics which maybe is new to some of our listeners data compression sometimes prepress guys tend to use data compression by exporting pdf printing files to send it by email using data compression settings makes it easier or helps to reduce the file size of uh, of your print file for example it is possible to reduce um, a pdf printing file which includes 100 pages and which could be you can you can reduce the pdf file of for example 160 megabyte down to 20 megabyte this helps to send the printing files by email dark side of this tool is the quality suffers when this tool is not used properly on the first picture using pdf export compression lossless or non we see the ears and the top of the giraffe is a sharp looking on the second picture by using jpeg compression for example or there's a second one available which is called lzw the size of your file will be smaller will be lesser and less but the printing quality will be poor you as we can see even in the background we will get 
some uh, big pixels. And again, as I said, for the resolution, it's not possible for a, printing, for a printer to fix this to improve the quality. On the next slide, just a screenshot of, um, as I would recommend, correct PDF export settings. This window is from InDesign, from Adobe InDesign, by exporting PDF files. Under compression, you are able to set settings. I prefer and I recommend only to use none, which is lossless. Um, don't use any other other compression, it, it doesn't make sense at this point. Topic number three for today, color management, color mode. CMYK versus RGB. RGB is my favorite topic. Topic. Still, a lot of prepress teams are using the color mode RGB. Why they are using this color mode? They are using it because the spectrum, the visible spectrum of the RGB mode is larger compared to the printable CMYK CMYK mode. By using RGB, it's you have you can it's by using RGB color mode. You can choose. You will be in a position to choose more colors. For example, here in this green area, compared to the CMYK mode, uh, yellow and green, you don't have so so much variabilities, even for the pink or red area on this side. Again, the designers and layouters normally know this. They know that printing will all only be performed in the CMYK mode, but still they are sending RGB files to the printer, uh, hoping to get uh, brighter or better quality. The issue is, by sending RGB files to your printer, the print, your printer will have to convert these files. This, normally, this will be made automatically as the most of the printers are working with workflows. By converting the RGB color mode into CMYK, the result will be darker. We can see this in this both pictures. And the first one just uh, uh, showing only colors. From bright pink, you will you will receive a dark pink, uh, which is really not cool. It doesn't look great. And by looking on this wedding picture. Um, the result by converting this into CMYK, CMYK will be very a dark picture, even if the background is, is green and is using dark colors as here. Just to, rem to remember, please use for printing only CMYK color mode, even in the design process. Don't use another color mode. Uh, it doesn't make sense. Otherwise, you will receive a totally different uh, book or quality and uh, you will have, I guess, you will have, we will have a big discussion between the prepress team and the printer at the end of the day, as the quality will not be the same um, as you have expected it. RGB should only be used for digital outputs um, in web, for smartphones, on your screen, everywhere, everywhere where power is required. Last topic for today for color management color profile. Using international color profiles is essential for printing high quality books. This makes sure that you will receive the colors as expected. By not defining, not implementing um, a proper profile in your PDF, in your p printing files, or if you don't communicate your favorite or the right profile to your printer, uh, still or again you will receive another quality as expected. Um, please be careful, there are different different profiles available for different paper types. For example, in Europe, we are using for uncoated paper the 47L PSO standard and for coated paper the 9L PSO. In, I know for, for other regions like in the US, there are other profiles available. It doesn't matter which profile you are using. Just it should be the right one for your paper type. And please don't forget to communicate this to your printer. Or just it's possible to implement profiles in PDFs. So by when the printer will open your PDF, he will see what kind of profile you have used. He, can, he will he will be able to check it, and uh, he will 
he will make sure that you will receive the same the quality as expected. Coming to our last chapter for today about files. Just some quick words about files. The first big point is always use closed file formats. Most recommended file format is PDF. Um, don't send open files like InDesign or if somebody is using another uh, software like Quark Express, don't send these open files to your printer. It's a matter of responsibilities. Um, with open files, everybody is able to change things or um, maybe he will move a, a, a page or he will move a picture and um, by yeah, after printing, it's, it will be too late by printing half a million books, 20,000 books, it doesn't matter. Everything which is, which is on printed on paper is done. So please only use closed file formats. This is much more easier and uh, the file size will even be smaller compared to sending big InDesign files including links, pictures and so on. The next point is use the test files. Unfortunately, we don't see this often in the world of printing education materials. Um, take two, four, five, ten pages, um, even if they are not finished, if your book is not totally finished, take the first ten pages if they are fine, if they are finished, send these files to your printer or to a printing expert and I'm sure he will help and support you to check these files in advance. This will help again to save a lot of time to start with the printing process right away after the, the job is awarded or the contract is signed. Um, data transfer. By hopefully from, from now on using data compression none or lossless you will have bigger files. Um, files which are too big to send it to email and as uh, sometimes printing will be conducted outside of a, of a country um, with an international printer, don't send CDs. Use a cloud-based file hosting system. The most of the cloud-based file hosting systems are free of charge up to a several size. Um, just use the, this kind of systems, this kind of cloud-based file hosting systems to overhand your files to the printer. This is much more faster and uh, if something has to be changed, for example implementing a spine or changing a color profile, changing resolution, the, the files can be exchanged on a fast way by using this kind of hosting systems. And one of the important messages for today, communication clear communication between all involved people to avoid any mistakes. For example, sending test files, please state, mention really clear in your email or by phone, wherever, um, that, you are t that you are talking about test files. Um, mention clear, but if you are sending final print ready files to avoid any communication issues. Sometimes it's not clear for the printer, are these the correct files, can I start to print, yes or not, and uh, this, can up, this can end up in a mess by using the wrong files or just wasting time as it is not clear for everybody which status the files have. And uh, also for any other issues, communication, take your phone, call your printer, call your printing expert and ask him if you have any issues with your file files in advance. Last slide for today, a small extra and this is an exclusive free pre-flight setting. I have worked out a free pre-flight setting, free means you don't have to charge to pay anything for it. We will share the link uh, shortly in our chat room or at the afterwards to all our listeners by email. This pre-flight setting can be used to check your printing files beforehand. You will be able to check your printing files um, before sending it to your printer. You will be able to, to know, do, 
have my designers use the right uh, pictures with the right resolution, the right color mode. This preflight setting includes the most critical and basic specifications for print ready files. I have reduced a little bit the the, um, the the settings. These are not export settings, which which we are using, for example, for, for magazine printing or catalog printing back in Europe. These are this setting includes basic specifications to avoid any big um, issues. That's all for the moment. I will be now available for your questions and comments. Thank you Wonderful. very much. Wonderful. Thank you, Christian. This was fantastic. Um, to get us started, we have a few questions, uh, so I'll just dive into the first one. If you could um, go back to your discussion on spine height, could you explain a bit more why that's important? Uh, I think this may be a new concept for many of us on the call, so if you could um, discuss that in a bit more. Okay, the spine, or in other words, is just the back of the book, which we see on the on the right picture, and it comes in by using perfect binding or thread theory. I have an example next to me, a realistic one. I hope everybody can see it. This is the back of the book, where all the pages, inner pages on the cover are gathered together. Um, yeah, every book, which which is finished with perfect binding or threads as you has a spine, has a back. And um, during the late layout or design process, the the most of the designers just forget forget this forget this step. As sometimes um, maybe it, it is not clear which binding type will be used later on. Um, maybe they will the the um, they will choose a printer which uh, which can't bound uh, so many pages together with saddle stitching, so he has to use to switch from saddle stitching from the from the left picture to perfect binding, and um, maybe this could be a reason why there is no spine in the layout or document available. But um, it's normally it's an easy it's an easy thing by by looking on a book, uh, take a book in your hand with perfect binding, and you will see that a spine is required. And with the formal on the next slide, it will be very easy to calculate it. And even if you don't have the bulk of your of your paper, if you don't have details uh, about it at the moment, um, take take my example, take 1.2, this is this is safe. Normally the range for the bulk is between one up to 1.4, 1.5. So 1.2 would be a middle uh, way. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from Sangeeta Raja. Is there a rapid testing kit that can help assess whether the specs were actually followed? If not, how can I ensure that I got what I ordered? I have not understood. Uh, let me, uh, I'll, I'll read it again. Um, yeah. Is there a rapid testing kit? that can help assess whether the specs were actually followed? If not, how can I ensure that I got what I ordered? Okay, a testing kit uh, in which way? For, for If you talk about PDF files, you can use the, the pre-flight setting or uh, 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 any other printing pre-flight for the PDF files. Um, this is what I would recommend. This this would be my kit to to solve the issues in advance. Even for for somebody who is who is not a printing expert, who has not a prepress expert, um, this setting can be used with the the normal Adobe Acrobat reader, um, which uh, which comes in with preflight settings for printing. Um, just use this as your kit to solve the issues or to check the quality of your files in advance. This would be my recommendation about having a kit um, to, to check the quality of the files. Okay, great. And I want to stress um, the the fantastic offering that, that Christian has provided us with the free pre-flight setting. I've shared the link in the chat 
Uh, the link is valid for the next seven days. And uh, we will also include the link in the follow-up email that we'll send uh, after the webinar has concluded. Um, okay. One other question from Sangeeta. If I send the CMYK file, will I get the printing as dark or same as if I send the RBG file? Sorry, could you repeat? Yeah, of course. If I send the CMYK file, will, uh, will the printing be as dark or will it be the same as if I send an RBG file? Hi, fine. Uh, the, the, the answer is very easy. If your design team is considering the CMYK mode, from the beginning of the design process, there won't be an issue as, um, as they will adjust the colors in advance by designing and uh, or drawing the pictures as they will see the results um, on, their, on their screen. So even maybe they have a printer available which, is, um, which works with color profiles. They are able to print out the pages on quality paper with quality printers to to check the color shade shape in advance. So it's not a, a by by talking about CMYK and RGB, if we talk about CMYK, um, it is not uh, getting darker pictures. These darker pictures are only coming by converting from RGB into CMYK. Uh, using a CMYK mode from the beginning is would be the perfect um, answer and the perfect tool to fix this issue or it won't be an issue. Okay, fantastic. And uh, I think Sangeeta has a follow-up question to her first. Um, she said, so in medicine, we have a rapid test to see if the active ingredient we have ordered is actually there. In books, how do I ensure that the printers have actually followed the specs um, defined in the contract? Essentially, how, um, how do we keep the printers accountable? Does she have an example, for example, what kind of specs? For example, if we talk about paper, and if we talk about paper specifications, um, the purchaser could send books to, for a laboratory test, for example. They can fa find out uh, that the printer has used the same uh, the exact um, paper weight, for example, opacity, uh, paper bark or volume. Um, the book size would be an easy task. You can just use a, use a ruler, for example. Um, what else about uh, the She's binding? asking about paper weight, color, and binding as well. Okay. So paper would be, for me, uh, sending it to, to a uh, laboratory test. Um, color would be, I would say, it's just a matter. Is well, have you ordered CMYK four color books or one color books? I don't, I don't uh, understand how about the, the question about color exactly. Maybe she is talking about profiles. Um, if we if we talk about profiles, uh, the printer can can uh, print quality proofs, quality uh, sheets in advance, which includes the right profile, printing profile. And after printing, you can use this quality print out and uh, compare this your printing book with your result and see if the color shape is the, is the same. For color, this would be the answer. And for binding, um, for binding, the only difference, which could be a little bit more difficult, would be if by talking about perfect binding, has the printer used PUR or hot melt glue? And um, for this, let me think about um, the best answer would be taking a book. A perfect bounded book like this one. Take your uh, take an iron which you normally you use are uh, using for clothes, and if the printer has used PUR glue, um, the PUR glue should be, let's say, resistant against uh, a heat of 40 degrees. 
And if it is not if it is not pure, if he has used hot milk, which is much more cheaper, the book the clue should go off um, on from after a few seconds. Okay, um, I think that you've answered her question, so thank you. Um, a few other questions. You mentioned the the different binding type. Um, what what are the variations in sustainability? Which binding holds up to lots of use um, compared to the others that you shared? Okay, um, the best binding type. Of, um, yeah. I would say it depends on your on your book on your type of book. Are we talking about an exercise book, about a workbook where somebody has to write something down and uh, which will be valid for one year, for one school year? I would say uh, don't don't use thread sewing, for example, because this is this is the most expensive binding type which is available. Um, and it depends on the number of pages. If you have a book roughly saying under including less than 96 pages, use only subtle stitching, which is the cheapest available binding type, and uh, which is subtle stitching is able to hold um, books with 96 pages uh, enough. That, that's strong enough for, for a book, but this. It, this always this also depends on the number of pages and of the paper which we have used. By using a paper with a higher bulk, we should not use uh, cellar switching for books with 96 pages. So there were different specifications which would influence um, the binding type. So thread sewing would be the best for books which will be use should be used for four or five years but mm, to be honest it depends where you want where where do you where do you want to have these books is it in for example the sub Sahara region um maybe using sweating is is good but I would not be sure if the books would uh, would be available for four or five years, whether if they would be in schools for four or five years. I think they, the, hmm. So I guess what you're saying, yes. it depends on a variety of, of the variables that yes, are in the exactly. Hand, right? It's really, it's really difficult to, to, to answer this. But of course, the, the, the environment. next one is spread shooting and, and perfect binding. If we talk about a long lifetime of a book, if we talk about a, a lifetime of two or three years, I would recommend by perfect binding the actual. And uh, for books lesser than uh, containing lesser than 100 pages, 96 pages, use subtle fiction. So this could be a main main answer, but it really depends on a on the right area of specifications. There's a number of books, a number of pages, paper type, paper details and uh, the area where the book should be used. And of course, is it a workbook, exercise mm -hmm. book, textbook? Mm -hmm. um, okay, thank you. Okay. Um, another question. You mentioned that in your experience, you don't often see test files in education. Why is that? Good question. <laughs> if somebody can tell me why, we we are requesting uh, test files, but um, normally we get test files just two three days before we get the final files, and this is too late. Test files should be sent at least one week before or two weeks before uh, the final files are ready. I don't know why it is not a common practice to using test files. So maybe one of the benefits of webinars like these are you will see that cultural shift in, in the files that you receive um, from education practitioners. Then, um, one additional question: You mentioned that graphic designers often forget the bleed area, which leads to lower quality printing. Can you can you explain more? What are what are some of the consequences of of that when a graphic designer forgets the bleed area? 
Um, the result will be as no point printer is, is able to print exactly each sheet of paper in um, the result will be white lines, like what, for example, this one. Um, let's let's imagine the bleeding area would be here on this line. I hope everybody can see this. Uh, my errors, and if if there's no color, you will have white white pages, white. Um, we in German we say white lightning, as uh, the printing. The printing process is moving a little bit, just a few millimeters, normally one millimeter. And if, if there is no color which goes beyond the bleeding area, but beyond the trimming, trimming line, um, it, it will look... It, of course, still the, the pupils can read and can work with these books, but the quality will, be, will not be the same today. Yeah, the quality will suffer. You will have those white lines like this one here. This is a good example, I think, by imagining the, the, the bleeding line would be here between blue and the white. Um, there we go. Oh, we can't see where you're you're pointing. Are you pointing, though? Considering... Oh, sorry. Oh, there it is. Okay. Ah, sorry. Okay, I got it. So if you imagine the bleeding uh, area, the bleeding line would be here in the middle between blue and white. Um, and by printing, you would have this small one millimeter variation during the process. You will have white lines at the end at the end of your pages. Mm -hmm. and Thank you. This is, by the way, this is only one one box with, which with the printer with, with, which the designer has to set by exporting the PDF files. Um, if he has considered to to have the color beyond the bleeding line during the layout process. Sometimes um, the designers, as, as I know, everybody is, is running out of time during such busy days by layouting and designing files. They sometimes they just forget to to hook a small box in the PDF export settings, which says um, please use the bleeding area which I have based set in the document. Oh, and the recommended is three millimeters for the bleed area. I right. would say at least minimum three millimeters, yeah. Oh, minimum. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification. Um, I believe that's all the questions that I've received. Um, are there any other questions from any of our other participants, attendees, panelists? Give a second um, for anyone to type anything in. Otherwise, I'm also open to answer any questions afterwards. If somebody sends an email back to you, uh, Kim or Mary, I'm open to to, to answer and support also afterwards after this webinar. Okay, fantastic. And this is to remind everyone on the on the call. This is an ongoing series. Um, so Christian will be back for a number of additional webinars to continue to take us through throughout the book production process. Um, I see the chat window glowing. Okay, I think um, I think that we are good for today. So I want to thank Christian for your expertise, your time for walking us through this. I want to thank all of our um, attendees for your time and for your fantastic questions. Uh, I think it was a really rich Q and A. So again, thank you to everyone for joining us, and we look forward to the next webinar on book production. And thank you also very much for my side. Thank you very much for listening uh, to, to me today. Oh, it was a wonderful webinar. Thank you, everyone.